The following is a Journeywise Network production. One of my favorite movies stars Tom Hanks. It's the movie Greyhound about a, a captain of a destroyer in World War II who's escorting troop ships across the North Atlantic. And when you see this story, it is filled with great intensity, uh, with incredible scenes, uh, just some of the most amazing dialogue. But it reminds us of how important it was for those who were in that story to live that story faithfully. Well, the producer of that movie was a member of one of the churches that I served as pastor, and he came from the business world and found himself in the entertainment world and has gone on to do several projects that both talk about not just the, the great storytelling of art and also of movies, but what does it mean to live that out in your daily life? And he's also a powerful person of faith who understands the power of that intersection. I'm Shane Stanford. Welcome to You Matter Podcast and our conversation with producer Ben Nern. Friends, we want to welcome you uh, once again to our You Matter Podcast. And we are so excited today to have a, a, a dear friend and a person that um, I have watched his journey over the last decade and have been so um, interested and also impressed with um, how he has carried on that journey. I've, I've known Ben's family for a little over a decade. Uh, they attended the church where I was senior pastor for about 11 years and I uh, got to know Elizabeth and the kids and now you are like us, uh, empty nesters. And so I know that is a, a whole new world and, uh, and but it has its own special joys. But Ben Nern, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Shane. You bet. Um, ben, I would like for you to kind of explain briefly the the journey of Ben Nern over the last few years of your life. Uh, I know you started out as an investment banker. Did I have that correct? Yeah, I start actually. I started out as an accountant. Uh, oh, wow. Ernst and Young. <laughs> yeah, it's even Did more exciting. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, now, but then you're correct. I moved into investment banking for uh, quite a while after that. And you did uh, M&A, right? You did mergers and acquisitions. And, I did. And then did you always, though, want to be uh, an investment banker, accountant, or, were, or did you want to do what you were doing now? Has this been a, a dream or how did this transition into executive well, producing happen? Yeah, I don't know how that long and circuitous route uh, actually transpired. I think at the end of the day, I just had to say, God, uh, you know, must have uh, laid the path for it because I certainly didn't plan it. <laughs> sure. um, you know, when I was in investment banking, I longed to be an entrepreneur and um, starting the uh, film production company was really just an offshoot of of that desire. Um, and I really fell in love with the process um, and and really finding kind of a creative side of my personality that had been so kind of stiff and wooden and analytical before that, you know? Well, it is an interesting journey. Uh, I, I think anyone would agree that, um, you know, I think I think there are parts of all of us that have certain aspects that of our personalities and temperaments that we would like to investigate or do otherwise than the thing that we chose maybe vocationally. But um, did you have that, you know, intersect moment where you went, yep, this is where I want to go? Or what was that transition? What did it look like when you left investment that's, banking? That's a very interesting question. So uh, I actually came to faith fairly late in life. I was 36 years old, um, was working in Houston while my family was living in Memphis um, and was consumed with money and power and and career advancement um and you know basically was 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 in a position where i was lighting the rest of my five my, less of my of my life on fire on the altar of what i thought was success um mm -hmm. and shortly after that that i really came to realize that you know that's that's not the path that that god has necessarily laid out for me and um we went through the 2008 financial crisis, and I was I was uh, forced to lay off two thirds of 
the people that worked for me. And every time I was saying, Hey, this guy, you're like, if you just let me go, you can, yeah. you can save most of those other people. Um, because I couldn't just quit because there was a financial component to it that made it difficult. And finally they took me up on it. Uh, oh. and I was shocked because for a year i had been begging and, uh, I had no idea what I was going to do. And I was in my office, cleaning out my office, uh, when a former client of mine said, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and he asked me if I would you know, help uh, look at an acquisition that he wanted to do on the side. I said, well, you don't have to do it on the side. So <laughs> it, it was of a, of a film production company. And so we spent, we spent a good bit of time um, going back and forth, um, Los Angeles. And I was, I was saying, this is not, do, do not buy this. this. This one is toxic. And so he's like, well, let's start one. then." And so we did. <laughs> wow. Now you, I think you began your career in the entertainment business though, with Cross Creek pictures. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what, what the Thompson family and I co-founded, uh, wow. was Cross Creek. Now Cross Creek, for those who may be um, it sounds familiar. Uh, you had a, a very big hit, a very successful hit in Black Swan. Was that the first picture that y'all did or was? Nero that... Uno. <laughs> wow, my goodness. And talk about a big deal. Um, was there Were there things that were stark when you went into this business that you were like, well, I could have never expected or imagined that that would be part of it? Yeah, you just named the first one. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Well, the the uh, the uh, commercial and financial success of Black Swan was uh, out of the blue. Yeah, and didn't it win Best Picture? It was nominated. <clears throat> did not win Best Picture. Um, it it uh, won Best Perform. Natalie Natalie Portman won Best Performance from uh, Actress. And I remember. I mean, I've I've seen it. It's been several years now, but it's a pretty intense, emotional uh, journey through there. Was was there anything about the 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 way that the picture, not just the way the picture was made, but about conversations that you were realizing about the 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 topic and about the conver about the uh, the the I'm going blank here about the conversation happening because it is a very intense emotional uh, road. It is intense, emotional, and dark. Yes, uh, quite dark. Um, and. That really gave rise in, in that picture and then just a couple of the other ones that we did gave rise to my desire to start uh, a second one called Sycamore Pictures, where I actually was able to control the content that we were producing. Because in my position in um, Cross Creek was purely deal structure, financial, raise capital uh you know that side under underwrite the the investment um and was not you know I really didn't have a voice in the creative um and so therefore i could say it was that was i really think that's a cool movie had nothing to do with it so sure. that, i don't get any of the benefits but uh, but it did it did spark in me as we talked about earlier this this, this desire to flex this creative muscle and to reflect more of who I am. Well, and you are, I mean, I, I've only known the Ben Nern who is a, a faithful, you know, child of God, someone who cares about the things and the values that are happening in your life and in your family's life. Of course, you know, uh, much like my situation, most people like me because of the person I'm married to. Uh, so, you know, and you are married to one of the, you're married to really, truly one of the kindest, most compassionate people I've ever met. I don't know how anyone does like Elizabeth. Um, they, but they don't, they, everybody does. Of course, you know, and, and, and it says something about you too, that she, you know, is part of this duo, but, um, uh, but your children also have that kindness to them. So you're doing something right, buddy. I just want you to know that. So she, she certainly is. <laughs> I love it. Very <laughs> and humble as well. Um, but you talk about this creative muscle, but it wasn't just about the expression of the creative muscle, because I remember the first conversation we ever had is you said you wanted to make pictures with a redemptive um, mm -hmm. a backdrop to them. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, I mean, I think 
what I was really desiring, and this is part of it, it, part of creative and part of of who I am, right? Is that that they reflect my worldview in some way or another, um, and really, I think my faith dominates the the worldview that I carry, but I did not want to necessarily produce Christian movies per se. Um, sure. You know, but we wanted everything in, in each thing we did, each movie that we did, we wanted some element that reflected some tenet of our faith. Well, and I remember in some of those early conversations, you talked about um, you wanted there. I mean, because you have an office in Los Angeles and the one in Memphis. And right. that really is an that's an interesting polarity. Uh, in some way, in some ways, it's not. It, you know, there's always been that connection, of course, between Memphis and artistry and 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 what yeah. happened in the entertainment world. But but you also wanted there to be people who were in Memphis who were directly involved in terms of the investment, in terms of the 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 process. Um, did many of the people that um, that you started the company with, in terms of early investors and connectors, did, were they Memphians? A lot of the investors were, were Memphians. Probably over half were wow. were Memphians. Um, and uh, you know, pretty much had a similar worldview and aspiration for sure. what we were doing, um, which was which was important to have alignment in that on that front. Um, doesn't mean they were they were excited to you know lose money right they, they, wanted, <laughs> they wanted they wanted it to be financially successful as did I but um, they pretty much all had the same um, heart for what we were trying to do. Well, I I remember um, uh, that one of the people that I'm very close with and of course and am involved with I know was involved maybe I think is one of your early investors in some things and and I do remember the conversation uh, or asking this person um, he had had a lot of conversations with Ben Nern but then I said what do you remember the conversation when Ben went you know I'm going to go from being the COO of a of a movie company to hey I'd like to start a company that makes movies did you have some <laughs> interesting conversations with folks who maybe were not as prepared for that uh, uh, that jerk in the journey a little bit? Uh, I did. I think the, the conversation, but, you know, I think a lot of people, it took a lot of people by surprise a little bit, but in the, you know, initial conversation to compare what I was doing or what we were producing at Cross Creek to what, you know, my vision for Sycamore was, I think it clicked pretty quickly because of the type of people that I was speaking with. Absolutely. Um, well, and you, um, uh, I, I know that um, one of your, I th was your first picture the way, way back, Sycamore? Yes, it was. It was. It was, <laughs> it was a, a tremendous success as well. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what the pattern is here, but the, the first <laughs> is your best. I don't know. <laughs> well, now it is a good movie. Now that, and it starred two of my most favorite people, uh, Steve Carell yeah. and, and also Alice and Janie, right? Yep. Yep. And yeah, Sam Rockwell. I, I, I still uh, lull off to sleep, Ben, with West Wing episodes. And so, but I'll <laughs> tell you, Alice and Janie, um, you know, when you see her in West Wing and then you watch her in the sitcom Mom and you watch her in The Way, Way Back, she is a phenomenally talented actress. She is extremely talented and she is also a really kind person. Really? So mm -hmm. did you? Did you find dealing with these folks who the whole world knows, did you find anything that sort of came to mind first? Did, were you intimidated? Was it uncertain or was it just another process in the business or or are dealing with artists truly as different as we all are told it is? It is absolutely as different. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the good thing is all the difficult conversations you're having through their agents. Ah, right. Sure. So, you know, how much am I going to pay you? You know, what what commitments do I need to support the movie on release? All you know, all of those types of conversations are going through agents. So, you know, it's not ultimately, you know, they they get their feelings hurt just like you and I do. 
you know. Sure. Um, and so, you know, you well, still, ben, have I never, I never get my feelings hurt. Cause I always <laughs> get exactly what I want, Ben. I, I, <laughs> Good for you. My agent is awesome. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Did, do you remember the first time, uh, that you, um, you know, under your breath or, you know, found someone that was just totally unreasonable, uh, and it surprised you. And then the opposite, someone you were expecting to be unreasonable that surprised you that you don't have to say their name, certainly. But do you yeah, certainly won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, and this particular one that surprised me, like, I just assume all people are going to be reasonable and good, right? Sure. Sure. Um, uh, and their profession doesn't figure into who they are as a person. But I you know, did find out that it does leak into, <laughs> you know, some sometimes their uh, uh, entitlement. Um, but this one person in particular, while we were shooting the movie was gracious and kind. And, uh, you know, I was a little surprised by how, I mean, uh, you know, was, came to our investor dinner, sat down next to Clayton, my son, talked to him about fishing, oh, you know, wow. he was just, you know, a prince of a human being. And then on release, something didn't go the way he wanted it to go. And he wanted us to, you know, basically step in. I said, I can't, I just, I can't do that. And uh, he completely flipped. Wow. Into an unreasonable, ungrateful, uh, spiteful human being. Wow. So. I, and, and, you know, we, I think we've all faced that in our, regular normal lives you certainly faced it doing investment banking i'm sure time sure. in but um I, I do think do you think that in the in the creative world that because you are dealing left brain right brain and all of those depths of emotion is it is it a different kind of reaction in this business than it is in the previous world you inhabited or is it just business a lot more a lot more goes unsaid than That's in the good. regular business world. Um, okay. And you have to kind of coddle. Ah, sure. You know, right. um, to a degree that you don't have to in, nor <laughs> in, in, in other business uh, industries. Um, you know, they're, they're both your partner and the product you're selling, which is a weird yes. dynamic. Yes. I've, uh, I've heard of, I've been in, of course, in the publishing world for a long time now. And, um, I've always been the the author. I'm now in a situation where we are the I'm the publisher and working in that end of it and and learning a lot. I'll tell you, it is a zero to seventy in you know very quick uh, difference. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot different not being the talent, right? <laughs> it is. Well, and and of course, I would never <laughs> use that word in any way when it came to me. But I do know that it is different to be on that other side of it because. You do, I think, get to see, see a sense of someone's soul, especially if they are using their gift to create something that is mm -hmm. theirs in a lot of ways. Yeah. And uh, there's yeah. a, it's like having a child involved in the conversation a lot of times. Well, and, and, and that's that's really when everything goes right is when there's a piece of their soul that mm -hmm. they're being vulnerable and revealing, um, whether that's the writer, the director the actor you know whoever um and where it goes awry is where they're trying to produce something for somebody else oh, right sure. so if it's not if it's not about who you are and then come from in here but i'm trying to sell something to somebody mm. is where it generally goes awry wow wow um I remember I did not, and I told you this, uh, a movie that sort of landed on my radar that I had no idea that you were connected to is Begin Again. Yeah. Uh, truly one of my most favorite movies. I uh, loved uh, um, uh, listening to the music. The music is what captivated me. It's And it mm -hmm. wasn't particularly my type of music, but loved it. I love Mark Ruffalo, of course, and uh, and of uh, Keira Knightley. I mean, just amazing. Didn't know she could sing as well as she does. Um, and um, I mean, just a beautiful movie. But 
you know, um, Ben, you really could sense the redemptive nature. It wasn't the same kind of relationship that you see between a man and a woman on screen a lot of times. Right. I think that was intentional from what I heard. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, when you think about that type of movie, uh, really, what was the purpose behind Begin Again in terms of the story you were trying to tell? That was 100 percent the purpose was the 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 reunion, you know, the 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 opportunity to step outside of your marriage, maybe find something that's a little younger, a little, you know, whatever the 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 temptation is, but then going back into uh, your marriage because you love that person and because there's a commitment there. Um, and it's funny you bring that one up because <laughs> there was there was a lot of consternation um, on that set. So we co we co financed and co produced that um, with uh, a company that's no longer around. But um, we were we were screening pieces of that movie as as uh, we were filming just to get a sense for our people understanding what's going on. And they started really falling in love with the the Mark uh, uh, Ruffalo, Mark Ruffalo, and Kieran Knightley dynamic. And so our co-producers talked to John Carney and like, "Hey, John, we think you need to make these two end up together. We need to change the end of the film." And uh, they did that without even consulting us mm -hmm. um, in a in a dinner. That that you know was after after filming one day that that we just went home, or not home back to the um, hotel, and we found out about it. You know, two days later when he was writing pages, we get get new pages. And we're like, wow, what's this? And you know, we we talked to our partner instead of the director, John. Um, and we're like, that yeah, we this is not what we had agreed on. This is not, and so we had this ongoing struggle um and we agreed to let john make the decision hmm. um and john decided that they were right that wow. my partner was right and so they go through the shoot they they shoot it out that way and then we added two days on the end because john changed his mind oh <laughs> and okay. And uh, he changed it back to the way that it was originally written and that that my partner, Tom, and I fell in love with. Mm, yeah. And, and it is a wonderful so, story. Yes. So there's proof, right, that God's got a hand in this and yeah. that we have zero power <laughs> to make it to, to make God's plan work. <laughs> sure. Well, so for a lot of people out there, they may not understand what an executive producer does. Can you briefly kind of pull, peel back the layer and tell us exactly what an executive producer does? Well, you know, sometimes I'm an executive producer. Sometimes I'm a producer. It, it really is not. There's not a whole lot of distinction uh, in that. Um, but the the producer unit mm -hmm. hires basically. Um, options a script or commissions a script, hires the the director, collaborate with the director on the cast, and um, then have a uh, final cut. So sometimes the director has a final cut, sometimes the producer has a final cut. We generally always required you know the producing unit to have the final cut in our uh, films because of what we were trying to do. Sure. Um, and, and, um, so exclusive and we shared exclusive media as our partner on beginning again, shared final cut. But since we couldn't agree, the tiebreaker was the, was the director. Now, as your, uh, acquisitions go, are you looking for original screenplays? Are you looking for transitions from novels, books, or just everything in between? Well, how does that process work? I would say I would say previously it's everything in between. It's we find something that a piece of literary material that we fall in love with, whether it's a book or a um, one of them was a was a 
magazine article and, you know, um, you know, any, anywhere, or we get a lot of them uh, or scripts that get submitted to us for consideration. And, you know, we pick the ones that we like. Um, but today we're not actively looking for features. Um, the, the, the movie industry is really kind of the, it's been turned on its head a little bit. Um, you know, with COVID, COVID taught everybody stay at home and watch it on your TV. Um, you know, people have, have, have begun returning to, uh, theaters, but not in the, not in the mass that they once did. And, and generally only for, you know, superhero type, uh, sure. movies or, or franchise movies that are based on IP of some sort. So, um, and, and for the streamers, you know, they do features, but their, their, their purpose of doing a feature is to attract new subscribers. Mm-hmm. Their, their highest, their highest expense is customer churn. So mm-hmm. they retain subscribers with their, um, uh, limited series and and episodic uh, television, so that's really where they put most of their money. That's really where they focus most of their um, development efforts. And so, um, you know, we have kind of shifted to uh, looking at some some television stuff. But it's, it, I would say, I spend much less time uh, nowadays in in entertainment than I once did. So was Greyhound the first direct to streaming? Was that the first movie that y'all did project like that? So yeah, that was the first one we did like that, but it wasn't intended to be like that. Okay. So we did. So when we when we started Greyhound, we started it in I'm gonna say twenty late 2018, early 2019. I think no, it was April 19. No, no, April of 18. Um, and we couldn't quite find the story. Mm. And so we kept cutting on it and kept cutting on it and kept going back. We as a whole host of producers. It wasn't just us. I mean, Sony was the head, the head producer. Um, and, and we were getting ready to release it in April of 20. Uh, right at the start of COVID. Yeah. And so we sat on it for six months, nine months, and it was looking very, very bleak. Wow. And Stoney calls us up and said, hey, we got an unsolicited offer from Apple to, you know, launch their streaming service with with this movie. And we said, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, so, you know, we got our money back, made a little bit of a return, but it wasn't anywhere close to what you know, we had our sights set on. Because it is a, it, it is truly an amazing movie. Great, you know, a, a great concept. Uh, but yeah, I can see where it would be difficult to figure out what you're going to spend the two hours on uh, there in the middle. <laughs> of course, you have a, you have, and it turns out beautifully done. Tom Hanks uh, plays a, a, a Navy captain on his first uh, voyage mm-hmm. across the Atlantic. And um, we get to, um, uh, you know, he, learn about wolf packs and uh, submarines <laughs> and and the kind of the the maneuvers. Um, uh, what was it like uh, meeting Tom Hanks? I, I think everybody was going to want to know that uh, that comment. I really only met him briefly, um, but he's he's a prince of a man. He has he has uh, a a partner. Um, who has all of his difficult conversations for him and he's uh, very efficient. <laughs> sure. Sure. I can imagine at this point. Yes. But well, Tom I, Hanks is just a great person. Yeah, and I've heard that from other folks that I know have, have met him. They just continue. It's just the same conversation all the way across that he's such a very good person. Hey friends, there is a wonderful podcast. that's part of our journey wise podcast network that I have listened to every episode and I love it. And it's called Choosing Cheer. And the host is Nicolette Bell, who is our chief operating officer and one of our teachers. Nicolette, tell us about Choosing Cheer. I grew up as a cheerleader. And so um, I had learned this verse in John as a little girl uh, where Jesus says, in this world, 
you will have trouble. It's a promise. Mm -hmm. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And I learned that verse as a, as a young girl on how to have a positive attitude. Sure. And so cheerleading was more to me than a sport growing up. It was a mindset that I had. And as I grew older and began to dig in the scriptures, um, I began to realize the connection uh, that had to Jesus. And so we do a lot of talking about the joy of Jesus, finding the joy of Jesus in life's most difficult moments and then in life's everyday moments as well. Well, anyone who knows you knows that you live this philosophy, this motto mm -hmm. so well, and it does. It brings me a lot of joy to listen. I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, I'll admit that, but the ones I do, I become very faithful, and this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Take a listen, Choosing Cheer with host Nicolette Bell. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I think as we, you know, I wanted people to get a sense of the projects you've been involved with and things that you've been connected to. But throughout this process, have you, how has your faith intersected uh, intentionally or unintentionally in the, the work that you've been doing is, you know, how, how do you continue that connection? Well, um, our, my faith connects um, principally in what we select to, to work work on um yeah. you know trying to um present a a a genuine faith that's not that's not a a, a sermon on celluloid bill yes i hear you um that that you know we can you know approach people that wouldn't otherwise be in a christian movie Sure. Wouldn't, wouldn't, um, uh, but, but that also can, you know, pastors can pull, um, s you know, sermon, um, um, yeah, or, or whether clips or if it's just a, uh, you know, object lesson, you yeah. know, uh, sure, sure. um, you know, that's, that's really what we're, you know, for example, in, in the way, way back, you know, if, if there was just a shot of Sam Rockwell on that porch reading a Bible, then that would have been complete. That would have been a Christian movie, right? But the sure. idea is the idea is that we're showing mentorship and we're showing uh, compassion and and empathy, uh, which should be tenets of our faith, right? Um, yes. You know, in a in a secular setting, um, intentionally. So that it's not off-putting to a certain audience, but sure. um, but has some it mixes a little vegetables in with the cake batter. <laughs> well, I mean, and you are and you are cooking out in the open. I mean, this is life that you're talking about. Right. I, the way way back in particular is a there's a lot of emotional connections and relationships that are being sort of filleted open so that you can mm -hmm. see the inside of them. But that's the nature of life. I think that's why. I think that's why that movie is so touching to me and so important. But um, you really, you. do you think that you're, I, I think I've heard artists, I've heard particularly musicians say this, that, you know, more than just using or creating art, they're developing a language to be able to talk about a situation mm -hmm. or a difficulty uh, that's in just about every human experience. And they're, they're using their art to be able to have that conversation, to, to use that Certainly. language. Do you do you sense it like that sometimes? Oh yes, I, I mean, when it goes well, right? <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, uh, I absolutely. <laughs> I mean that that is that is what it's it's supposed to be, right? I mean, um, you know, I don't, I I think there are certain features that don't intend to do that, but they send, they tend to be empty, right? Mm, yeah. If you're not if you're not asking a question. Sure. If you're not if you're not posing a hypothesis. How has the how has the uh the, the last ten years been with your family? I mean, are you the cool dad that you know gets to <laughs> certainly <therapy>? not. <laughs> yes, yeah, I I had to ask it. I thought I knew the answer to this. Uh, uh, but but how how has this uh new journey been with your family? Have there has there anything kind of stood out or how's that been? It's been really fun. It's been, it's been fun to be able to take the kids to work day, you know, and come on set and see what's, you know, it's been fun. Um, and I think they've enjoyed it, but look, it's also been really, really tough 
uh, on the family. You know, we had a great run, um, but then the industry changed on a dime. Yeah. This is, this is even pre COVID um, industry changed on a dime. And, you know, these projects take two years to, from the time you, at least two years from the time we get involved until the time you start spending money until the time that, you know, you see them on screen. And so you, you know, you're not really able to shuck and jive like you'd like to be able to. Um, and so, you know, there were, there were several pictures that didn't return capital to investors. And that was like an elephant sitting on my chest every day. Um, and, and, and so it was very difficult because I feel very personally responsible, um, you know, for others capital and, um, more so even than my own. Um, and so, you know, we, you know, we ended up taking it on the chin and it was really tough for, you know, my whole family. I mean, they, they, you know, they walked through that with me Sure. and I didn't try to hide it from them. I was like, you know, Hmm. This is what's going on. Well, what a powerful uh, testimony, though, Ben, to say that you walked with them and they walked with you through that. Because I do think that it doesn't have to be in the entertainment business. There's so many vocations where they just they don't let your you don't let your family in. And I've watched it time and time again, the disintegration sure. of that. Uh, we only have a few minutes left. I have a couple more questions. Um, one of the questions I, I, I've been asking is, you know, the Bible says that, you know, everyone has a spiritual gift. Um, <laughs> went from you know accounting to business to the, you've been pushing uh, against the the boundaries of creative side of your life. What would you think, or what would you say your spiritual gift is? Well, it's funny. We just uh, we just took a spiritual gifts inventory at church. Oh, cool, cool. <laughs> uh, so, um, and after what I thought mine were: exhortation, mercy, um, exhortation, mercy, giving. And leadership, I think, for uh, my I can see all of those. Yeah, I love uh, the exhortation part. Uh, that um, has is, and I, I've all I've wanted to ask this question: Have you ever had a situation where maybe in very much in the secular world where someone knew that Ben Nern was a person of faith, and God angled the, those paths together? Is there something that stands out? Again, you don't have to every angle. every single time. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, when we go into a film, mm. part of the part of the initial conversation with the people in there is, so look, we're Christians. Wow. We don't we're not trying to present a Christian movie, but there are certain things. So if you get involved with this, there are certain things that we don't want you doing. Mm. You know, in in, the, in this movie, like do what you want and you're personal, but sure. and and so that's had. You know, we've had some interesting conversations and uh, a number of people who I wouldn't have expected like, oh, really? Well, yeah, well, I'm a Christian, too. Oh, and, wow. you know, uh, there are a lot more professing um, believers in Hollywood than we might expect. It's just not popular. And so they don't necessarily advertise. Well, your um, your daily witness, I would imagine is probably the the greatest way that you share your faith, just being a, a person of values and integrity. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk Absolutely. about, can you talk about a, a situation maybe where, um, and you just, I think we're hinting at it, but that where your faith really was the, the sort of the fine layer uh, in a time of difficulty or failure or, or struggle that you really, you were left with that. And that's what, you know, the foundation truly was for how you moved forward. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm that, <laughs> yes, I, the, the, um, wind down of our fund, uh, was really hard to walk through. And, um, you know, I, I, I lost friends in the process. Mm. Um, and, you know, most people, were just wonderful and supportive and whatnot. But some people were, you know, some people surprised me. <laughs> um, and it was really, it was really hard. And I felt like literally all I was left with was my family and my faith. Wow. Um, as I, as I had to try to start putting stuff back together and it, we, and, and it cost us a lot of money mm. um, 
So, uh, yeah, that's the probably the m- most stressful time that I'd, that I'd walked through up to that point. Well, and Ben, I have no idea what you're talking about because the church is always easy going. And, <laughs> you know, no one ever disagrees and goes different directions and expectations, all that stuff. But uh, well, I'm sure you've gotten surprised once or twice. <laughs> you know, I think the the biggest surprise for me, Ben, is always like you said earlier, the person that you thought was the rock that ended up not being, uh, you know, you push on it a little bit and it moves much further than you thought it would. Um, how, right. did you, how did you deal with those situations uh, just personally and interpersonally uh, with those folks? So I always had two rocks that I knew weren't going to ever move, right? My faith in Jesus. Mm-hmm my faith, my wife, right? Wow. Those two things I knew I always had. And as long as I have those two things, I, it's okay. Right. Um, you know, we can, we can get by with, you know, without pretty much anything else. Um, when we came having to ha- had to have difficult conversations that didn't go well, ultimately I had to say, look, we're all broken. Right. And it's okay. I don't have to, require you to not be broken right so i can still love you through your brokenness and you know so that that's really where i had to get to personally dude that's worth the entire conversation today what you just said that was wonderful (laughs) because we've heard that a lot we've interviewed some great folks on this podcast so far and it seems God tends to always bring it right back around to what you just said. Um, Mm. And thank you so much for that, because I I do think that a lot of people think that folks who are in certain places or have a certain amount of money or have certain advantages in places and and circumstances, that they don't have any of the the normal struggles that others do. And of course, everyone is broken. And oh, yeah. some of us, the brokenness is more glaring than other places and other and, and other ways, but we're all broken. Um, For sure. My final question to you, my friend, is, uh, well, let me ask this question first. Any big things in terms of the future plans that you're doing and and or anything you uh, want to sh- share first here on the You Matter podcast? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> now, you know, what What does the horizon look like for you right now? Well, so I continue to spend some time in the entertainment space, um, particularly with one specific writer. Um, but I really have to now, given where we are at, at Sigler Pictures, really start to look elsewhere as well. And so I am in the process right now of launching a um, third-party restaurant delivery service. I mean, I, I don't know how I end up in these things, but oh but, my gosh, um, <laughs> you know, based here in based here in Memphis, um, really focusing on um, higher higher end restaurants, so yeah. upscale casual dining and 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 um, and um, fine dining restaurants. So we're running a pilot right now with Kelly English at, at uh, Restaurant Iris. Oh, wow. What a great place. Yeah. yeah. If you're not from Memphis and you're listening to this, you need to come to Memphis for, for that right there. <laughs> um, you know, That's right. You, you really are one of the most interesting people. Uh, I, and I think it's because you are unafraid, it seems to me. Well, and I'm sure there is fear involved. But you're unafraid of knowing that the the waves and the, the current may shift and you have to do something different and new. And I really respect that about you, Ben. I really always well, have. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I, I will say Elizabeth doesn't like that I'm unafraid. <laughs> you know what? Pokey doesn't either. She she, she <laughs> likes certain she likes certain buoys to remain unmoved in the in the right, country. right, you know? right. Um, final question that I ask all the guests is um the, the title of the podcast is You Matter. Where do you think right now God has been known mattering the most? Wow. I would have said a few years ago at home raising children. <laughs> um, uh, but I think I do. I continue to think launching children is 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 important. 
um, and there are struggles in that. And, you know, there's fun joy in that, but, um, you know, the process of them helping them to become adult human beings, I think is, is, is very important. And thankfully they have their own faith and, and whatnot, but we still, you know, we still share about that. And I still hope to be a mentor for them in that. Um, but I think really in being in business dealings, um, whether it's in the entertainment industry or investment banking or wherever else, and being a person of integrity and being a person of your word, even when it costs you, hmm. because I think there's, there's plenty of times and people that are professing Christians that at least that I've run into that surprise you with what I would believe, you know, is less than exemplary behavior uh-huh. in, in business dealings. Well, uh, what a great word, Ben. Thank you so much. And um, I, one of the things about your family that I remember is, uh, won't go into the uh, details, but one night, your young son at the time had a rough night uh, at a church event, and <laughs> I followed him out. I followed him out to make sure he was okay. And before I could get to him, his sister got to him, his older sister. Oh, and I would say watching that interaction told me a lot about the Nern family. And so you're in my prayers. Please tell Elizabeth and the kids hello for me. And thank you so much for doing this. And I can't wait. Thank to, you, brother. I can't wait to interview you in the future about your next endeavor and see what's happening. <laughs> Great. Wonderful, Shane. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure and a lot of fun. Thank you, Ben. Take care. Hey, folks. 